So can I invite my first panel to the table, please? So I'm Chinetta Jones uh, from the Wellcome Trust. And joining me for the first session, Frontiers, Why Research on Research Matters, are Sara De Rijka from CWTS Leiden University, Daniel Hook from Digital Science, and James Wilsden from the University of Sheffield. And so I'll start off with a few remarks followed by my colleagues on the panel. We are not going to take questions in the first uh, session, but we will be available at the end of the day to be able to take questions. So my remarks are going to be from the lens of a funder. The Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development reports an estimated $2 trillion is spent on research and development around the world. Considering this sizable investment in research, there is actually little understanding of what works, for whom, and under which circumstances. On Sir Henry Wellcome's death, his will established a charitable foundation for the advancement of medical and scientific research to improve mankind's well-being. Today at Wellcome, we are stewards of an endowment valued at more than 23 billion pounds, which funds all of our charitable activities. Wellcome's mission today is, is inspired by Henry's will to improve health for everyone by helping great ideas to thrive. And core to achieving our mission is science, research, innovation, and engagement with society. But over the past 18 months, we've asked ourselves, to whom are we accountable? Our legal accountability is clear. But what does it mean to be a charitable foundation? In whose interests should we be trying to act? And how do we make the best use of our independence as a foundation in service to society? We've determined that our true accountability is to our ultimate beneficiaries, which are the people whose health is improved by our work. So we should have their best interests in mind whenever we make decisions. And therefore, they have the right to ask, what are we doing and why? So why research on research? Well, as I've alluded, Welcome wants to distribute its funding in the most efficient, fair, effective, and beneficial ways possible to achieve our mission of improving health for everyone. And to that end, we wish to encourage research that helps us to better understand not only our own funding practices and policies, but those of other funders and how they can be improved to enable research and innovation. So for the last two years, we've gone in search of the research evidence that can inform our policies and our practice, and we've spoken with more than 25 international funders to find out what we can learn from others. However, we found that the existing research evidence is fragmented, not generalizable, and very different, difficult to action by funders. We also found that there's little funding for meta-research that could usefully inform funding practice and funding policy. But before we embark on investing in more research, we need to optimize the potential of the research being produced to be put into policy and practice. So funders should co-design, co-develop, co-produce studies that could impact on funding policies or practices in the same way that clinicians and publics and patients are brought in early in the design of the research, the conduct of the study, the production of the study, and the insights that are interpreted from that to maximize the potential that they are actually going to achieve beneficial outcomes. And lastly, there should be a defined set of questions where funders' data policies and practices can be shared. And these insights can then be generalized so that funders can adopt and translate as relevant for their own operating context. The time, is act to, the time to act is now. There are mounting pressures on research funding. There are urgent existential threats facing the health and well-being of humans and the planet, including drug-resistant infections, mental illness, and climate change, research is needed 
to accelerate our understanding of science and health and find solutions to complex societal challenges. Advances in data and technology offer more sophisticated and innovative tools for obtaining real-time intelligence on research systems. However, putting progress at risk is the relentless drive for research excellence, with the focus being on the what and not enough on the how. So we are delighted to announce that there are other research funders around the world who share our ambition to reimagine our collective approach to how we can contribute, support, and encourage more strategic, open, diverse, and inclusive research for everyone. And over the coming months, we look forward to expanding the consortium to include additional funders, publishers, learned, and professional societies, uh, et cetera, as partners that share our vision. Thank you. Uh, so the rest of us will stay here. Um, welcome also on behalf of, uh, of uh, myself and CWTS. Um, I would like to talk a little bit about um, uh, research on research from an academic's perspective. So what is research on research in the current academic landscape? Uh, so I'll take you through that question very briefly, um, but I'll give you the punchline immediately, and that is that uh, research, or research is obviously not a new field, um, but by building strategic, academic, and other alliances, we do think it today has more transformative potential than ever. So is it a new field? Well, of course not. Um, so if you know your literature a little bit, I've put some covers of important journals and books on a timeline. So this is not absolutely not comprehensive, but uh, you can see here ISIS, which covers the history of science, history of medicine, history of technology. Uh, first issue appeared in March 1913. And then you see in the middle a little bit of a burst of uh, journal and book launches in the 60s and 70s, of course, including Robert Merton's foundational work on the sociology of science. And you see journals like Social Studies of Science and Scientometrics also appear here. So here you see also this rise of science technology studies, innovation studies, Scientometrics. And then more recently, we also see other uh, forms of research uh, on research pop up mainly across the biomedical sciences and psychology and economics. And this is interestingly, interestingly also driven uh, mainly by a growing concern over quality and reproducibility of research. And it's often done by researchers that also want to better analyze and better understand the problems in their own fields and beyond their own fields. So what we've been doing, um, and we here is uh, colleagues from both digital science and, and CWTS, is to see, take a look at which scientific communities are actually currently involved in some form of research on research. And um, what you see here is uh, a map that visualizes research on research as an overlay uh, over the uh, overall landscape of research. And uh, this is based on an initial core set of 345 papers from the period of 2004 to 2019 uh, that we consider to be uh, representative of this broad range of uh, research on research topics. Um, so both the topics, but also the disciplinary and methodological approaches. So after we collected that core set, we also um, collated the references in and also citations to these papers, and we added the papers that uh, cited at least two from that core set. Um, uh, so we ended up with an additional set of 2,129 publications. And um, the map is grounded in an algorithmically identified set of almost 3,000 research fields, and of these fields there are 11 um, in which research on research publications are concentrated, and most of these fields are easy to recognize, and we've labeled them here. So in the social sciences, we see that the four most prominent fields are scientometrics and science technology studies, innovation studies, and higher education studies, and that is also, I think, the corner where ISIS should probably be somewhere. 
Uh, but we also see the science of science field in the natural sciences and uh, in the behavioral and health sciences, there are four fields that we labeled as meta research. So this is probably also that um, little, uh, or not little, it's actually quite a big um, emerging uh, set of topics, um, this more new wave of research on research work. And this is also interesting because these researchers and these disciplines have uh, also been quite active in putting forth terms like meta-research and meta-science and science of science and have been launching other also very high-profile uh, centers and networks and conferences and that has cre created some, some tensions uh, within the broad field of research on research and we were just talking about that when, while walking over here. Um, I think that slide is actually not on the deck. What, uh, what should have been on there is actually an interesting exchange between um, the meta science community in which um, people were flagging that this is an emerging field. And then there were tweets at the same time, there were a couple of conferences happening at the same time, the meta science conference and the conference 4S of the social studies of science and also the ISI conference of the scientometric community. And there was a little bit of a battle going back and forth uh, between these communities about also um, these newer emerging um, disciplines columbusing um, already long existing fields and disciplines and actually claiming that there was something new to studying the social uh, in uh, science and technology. Um, so I think I'm, 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 I must apologize because I'm working here with, uh, with another s set of slides that I thought I would. Um, so um, it's, uh, this is okay. The, the wor so why, why is it important actually to, to not think in the ways that we are um, uh, working from different divides and from silos? We cannot, that's not a sustainable way of operating. So for us, the research on research field has an opportunity to actually start working together. And it's also a necessity to start working together because the whole world of research is changing a lot, dramatically. Um, so there's a lot more competition uh, for expertise. There's also um, um, much more um, globalization going on, also technological change. Um, new infrastructures for research, a lot more data on research and, uh, and, uh, and also an, a need for more information about research. And as was already mentioned, we live in a very stressful time in which we should also start to tackle all sorts of global challenges together. So we cannot afford to actually uh, do this, this way of doing interdisciplinarity in which you actually reaffirm gaps between disciplines instead of trying to work together from uh, a core set of interesting questions and really benefit from the knowledge that is present in all those different dif disciplines. So this is also something that um, our center in Leiden, I think, um, has some experience in. So um, we realize that there's, uh, there's, that there's uh, demarcation work done in these different communities, uh, that there are also slightly different questions and potentially also aspects of objects of research that are different. But at the same time, we also see that when we start working together, and together in a broad sense, so across disciplines, but also with uh, other actors in the systems, in, in the system, including publishers, including funders, um, that that is actually uh, creating a, a transformative uh, capacity that we need right now. So in Leiden we have, and we will bring to uh, the Rory uh, network, uh, a huge interdisciplinary set of researchers, so we bring uh, anthropologists, but also scientometrics uh, researchers together to tackle questions that matter today. Um, we are organized in three research groups and uh, representatives of these research groups come together here. Um, and part of the research is also organized around thematic hubs 
on issues that matter currently in research management and science policy, including open science, for instance. So um, what we hope um, to do with the network and what we think are huge opportunities for research on research are actually here on the slide. So we should pull capacities and capabilities. So put our community's expertise to work, like I tried to do just now in that uh, visualization. So set, see that example of describing and visualizing and analyzing production in different communities and research on research. Learn from that, bring together different disciplines, and uh, focus on, uh, on these topics that matter. Also creating better measures. Uh, not only uh, should we work on understanding what helps science and scholarship move forward, but we should also learn how to better measure uh, high quality and societally relevant contribution. And then also real life and um, applied uh, um, forms of research together with, with all of you. We should apply it ourselves to real cases and expand the frontiers through that. So no, research on research is not a new field. Uh, but by building these alliances, we do think it has more transformative potential than ever. Thank you. So, right. Um, it's a real pleasure to also welcome you from Digital Science to uh, today's events and to the launch of Rory. Um, I'm going to take a little bit of a view of a technologist to the types of problems that we think about in research on research. And for me, uh, this is a, has been an interesting journey. Digital science is now almost 10 years old. And so it's something that, uh, as a company, we were, we were formed out of Nature Publishing Group a long time ago now. And we have invested in lots of different technologies that try to solve different parts of the problems that academics meet in their everyday lives. But not just academics, also administrators, funders, publishers. And so we have to see the problems of research on research from multiple different perspectives. And we have to think about uh, how people interface with the issues of research. Um, this article came out just a few years ago and uh, was interesting to me because it had been a topic that I'd been thinking about for some time. And this is effectively uh, um, an article which talks about the fact that there are now new research outputs. The paper is starting to uh, lose cohesion as the kind of focal point of, of, the, of scholarly communications. And I think that has led to all sorts of different uh, challenges in research from uh, recognizing people and giving them credit for the work that they have been doing uh, because it's not all about getting that nature paper anymore it is actually about creating a data set and allowing people to use that data set and making those data openly available uh, we still have a lot of people in their careers that are tied to these uh, forms standard forms of communication but in fact, we are missing a whole uh, generation of people who are leaving the field because their contribution is not being recognized. And so these are the, some of the technological issues, actually, that underlie some, some of the problems that we have on how research is moving forward today. I think one of the biggest issues behind that is actually trust in research. How do you formulate trust with research? Historically, trust has been built on brands. Where on the uh, on this side, so for you on your on your right hand side of this diagram, uh, there are uh, an allusion to different forms of trust. That when you read a paper, perhaps the fact that it appears in a particular journal, or you recognise a particular academic, or you recognise the institutions of those academic, or the funding that that academic has received, that will help you formulate some level of trust in what you're reading. On the right hand side, on the left hand side, we have more uh, recent, in some cases, forms of, of trust relationship that are being driven by things like uh, Twitter and blogs. 
uh, things where you're seeing citations to articles, where that helps you form a, uh, a relationship with the article and a relationship with the research. But not only that, also uh, policy documents that refer to that refer to papers and uh, patents that refer to papers. These are all part of a larger ecosystem, which is helping you form a bond of trust with that piece of research. And there's, I would suggest, a, a good thing about research publication, as it happens today, is that it's relatively slow, which means we don't see the uh, issues yet that we're seeing in the popular media, where trust is being blurred and being eroded, essentially by a deluge of information, a deluge of data, and a deluge of quick responses and quick fire responses to things that are happening. Here, we, in our own area, we do see a deluge of data, but, and it's one that's causing all sorts of issues with our space, but luckily not yet one with the truth. Although, it has to be said that uh, retraction watch and issues around reproducibility are in some sense uh, a zeitgeist for what we're having to deal with in our own area. So from a technologist's perspective, these are all of the interesting issues that we try to deal with and we try to think about. This might take a moment to load. <laughs> or do I need to do that? I need to do that. So this is a kind of a, a handy um, kind of mnemonic for all the things that digital science is doing around the scholarly publication. So we've invested in technologies like Overleaf, which help you write a publication and help you collaborate globally on a publication. We've invested in technologies uh, like uh, Figshare that many of you will know, an open data sharing platform that allows you to actually exchange data. Um, there are newest, newer investments like Gigantum, which allows you to improve the reproducibility of your research by looking at uh, how, which piece of code has been associated with uh, which piece of uh, data and the output that actually has come out of that marriage of those different areas. We're looking increasingly at technologies that help people write better papers, like Writeful. Uh, we're looking at technologies that help conglomerate all of those data from papers for institutional uses, like Symplectic. And just 18 months ago, we launched a product called Dimensions, which allows people to pull all of these data from these different areas together to really try to understand the whole research landscape. And so research on research is very central to what digital science is doing, both from a tools perspective and from a data perspective. And so it's a real pleasure to be able to support the, the uh, Rory Institute and to, to collaborate with our partners here, because we think that we can add some interesting uh, aspects of workflow around the types of research work that Rory hopes to do. And we also hope that uh, the Dimensions data set can really be extremely valuable uh, to all the partners who want to be involved. Um, my colleague Christian Herzog will speak a little later this afternoon about some of the facets of those data that we're making available and uh, will also show some of the research that we've recently been doing and that will come out in an upcoming report alongside other uh, reports that Rory are producing. No, it falls to me as the as the, the, the last of the pack, as it were, to say a bit more about um, uh, the two reasons we're here. We're here, of course, to talk about uh, the field of uh, research on research in all of its uh, varied forms, as, as uh, Sarah's eloquently described, um, and to share some of the latest and, and exciting work that's going on uh, in these different fields. And we're really delighted uh, that so many colleagues have joined us who are working uh, at, the, at the frontiers uh, of these debates, both within uh, academic research um, and in more applied arenas, uh, funders, policymakers, uh, publishers, technologists, uh, and others. Um, the other reason we're here is to uh, unveil to all of you the new uh, Research on Research Institute. Um, right. That. Uh, can't talk and do uh, 
IT at the same time. Um, yes, talk about the new Research on Research Institute. Uh, as you can see, it's been a race to get to this point, to the extent that the slides even haven't, uh, haven't quite landed. Uh, uh, but it's been fun and it's been exciting. Um, and uh, like many of us um, in the room, the uh, journey has both a sort of collective and a personal dimension. Here we are with a great. So, why Rory? Here we go. <laughs> We're back. Uh, <laughs> there is a lovely uh, animation that our friends at Digital Science have produced, which is on uh, uh, the Twitter feed and I think is up on the website now, or it's on YouTube anyway, it was on there this morning. Um, and I've just pulled a few screen grabs from this. This is, obviously doesn't move, I, again, my, my own technology breaks down. But it does sum up very nicely why we're here. Uh, as we've heard already, across the world, interest in these things is growing. Uh, there's all sorts of stuff going on. Uh, there's lots of reasons why we should all care, and we all do care. I know people in this room care greatly. Uh, about making research systems more efficient, more open, uh, more inclusive and more impactful. Um, but we also know that research on research, in all the forms we've described, can be rather fragmented. Uh, there's a nice paper from John Ioannidis that, that describes that fragmentation well. Uh, often ideas aren't moving as efficiently as they can around that map of knowledge that uh, Sarah presented to us. And they're also more importantly, not moving into application and into practice and into policy. Um, and that really is the focus of what we're about uh, with this new initiative. Um, if you'll permit me a, a, a minute of personal indulgence, um, many of us, I know, in this room have been banging on about this stuff for years. Uh, uh, in my own uh, varied and largely unsuccessful attempts to get uh, policymakers here in the UK to engage more seriously with the need to uh, systematically and seriously uh, support this kind of activity. Uh, I've made the case in various uh, settings with various colleagues. Uh, the Royal Society report there in 2010 uh, when I chaired the Metric Tide Review uh, for David Sweeney and others who's here in the room uh, in 2015. And most recently, uh, Richard Jones, who's here also my colleague from Sheffield and I, uh, wrote this report last year called The Biomedical Bubble. Uh, in which we talked about the challenge of uh, bringing better evidence and data to bear in the quest for uh, research prioritisation, thinking about balance across a large and complex research system like the UK's, at a time when we are embarking uh, on this quest to increase uh, the overall R&D intensity uh, of our economy uh, here in the UK. So. Uh, the biomedical bubble was an effort to do that. And in all of these, we talked at various points about the need for more of this kind of stuff. Uh, so one lesson uh, from today, I guess, is to those of us engaged in these sorts of pursuits, is if at first you don't keep, keep trying. Uh, if I get struck down now uh, on the way home uh, to Sheffield, which is quite possible, given the limited amount of sleep I've had uh, over the last five days, uh, I will at least uh, die happy, uh, knowing that uh, Rory now exists. <laughs> Uh, and that I may even live on in a posthumous ref impact case study. <laughs> which, uh, for any British academic here, uh, we know is, is the greatest uh, memorial of all. Um, but seriously, we wouldn't be here without partnership, which lies at the very heart of what Rory is. Uh, you're hearing now on this panel from the four core partners, uh, and I want to pay both uh, organisational and personal tribute to their uh, support, commitment, uh, and the vision that we have shared and collectively built over the past six or seven months. I worked a, a lot with CWTS when I was doing the Metric Tide with Sarah and Paul Valters and others, uh, and have really enjoyed that experience. Uh, digital science have always seemed to me among the big uh, commercial players in this space to be uh, certainly uh, one of the most interesting and creative and open to intellectual engagement. I'm, I'm treading carefully, spotting Microsoft and others in the room who are also obviously fantastic. <laughs> uh, but, uh, but digital science, no, have been doing all sorts of interesting stuff, as we know. Um, and Welcome, particularly, and, and Chinetta, particularly, uh, have really uh, taken this agenda incredibly seriously. I met with Chinetta first when she, I think, just had started at Welcome, and she said she was embarking on this 
process to map and understand what was going on in this field. Uh, and the seriousness of intent and the, and the thoroughness uh, and, the, and the, again, the creativity that she and colleagues in the uh, insight and analysis team at Wellcome have brought to that task has been truly impressive. Uh, and we would not be here today uh, without them and without uh, uh, Chinetta. So thank you, guys, for everything, and girls, for all that you've done. Uh, and we look forward to the next stage. Um, Rory has five aims. They're on our website. I won't read them out in detail. Uh, of course, we're here to do research. That's why we've got academics in the mix. But it's not a conventional university research centre. And I want to say to the academics in the room, this isn't about building up uh, you know, an empire for Wilson in Sheffield or for de Riker in, in Leiden. This is about creating a hub for uh, academic collaboration in this arena. And I very much hope that as Rory gets fully underway and begins to grow, we will be able to support and build the field uh, and that many of us here and beyond this room can benefit and participate. Uh, in this endeavour. Uh, that's why the physical base for Rory for the next two years will be here at the Wellcome Trust, not in a university, because that provides the best uh, convening space for that kind of activity. Uh, we've mentioned already, but I'll underline again, a huge amount of this is about translation. Uh, we're working, as Chinetta has outlined, with this fantastic lineup of funders. Together they spend billions of pounds a year uh, on research and innovation support. Uh, and if we can work with them to better understand the processes of decision making, uh, of allocation, of peer review, of evaluation that go on uh, in and around those funders and improve those through a mix of better data sharing, through experimentation, through the development of sharing of new tools, I think we will have made a, a real tangible contribution. Uh, we want to innovate. We want also, as I say, to broker, bring together uh, others in this space and create uh, a real uh, opportunity for ROR learning, networking and collaboration. We will be doing a whole range of projects. We don't yet know the full details of those. We know the headline themes, their decision making careers and cultures. A lot can go under any one of those three. Uh, the partners, all the long list of partners as well as the four core, are meeting for a whole day tomorrow to really start getting into the detail. We have a long list of fantastic ideas that have bubbled up uh, from the entire consortium and of course have been informed as well by the scoping we've been doing and the learning we've uh, engaged in from the work of others. Uh, we'll be designing a work program for the next two years. It's not all worked out in advance. Uh, it's real uh, uh, co-design, co-production in action. Uh, and we'll be producing a whole range of things. We have put some stuff out today. It's on the website, our first two working papers. Uh, one which is linked to uh, a great new tool that uh, colleagues uh, at Leiden, CWTS and Digital Science have developed, which looks at uh, research funding landscapes uh, and processes of priority setting. So the tool is up there on the site to play with and the paper uh, is the kind of how-to guide that goes along it. And then we also have a really interesting provocative piece from uh, Sally Hancock, Paul Wakeling, and Jen Chubb on 21st century PhDs, looking at the uh, dearth of data in many national systems on what happens uh, in and beyond the uh, doctoral and postdoctoral stages of research careers. Uh, some systems are much better than we are here in the UK. Here, the, the data is truly dismal. Uh, and, we, and we describe, in, well, they describe in detail quite why that is. Uh, but within that paper as well, there's a very constructive and positive set of suggestions for how we can uh, learn from the best uh, efforts that are underway in other systems to capture that data. And indeed, we have some speakers here today talking about those processes and those projects um, and uh, ideas for how uh, the UK system specifically might, uh, might uh, learn from those. There's a bit of media coverage. Uh, a shameless attempt by me and Wonky to link today's event to uh, uh, the really big news item of the day, the Conservative Party conference. Um, but the idea, of course, is that we want to spark to de debate and keep that debate going. So please do uh, join that conversation, get involved. We're very open to uh, ideas, suggestions. Uh, there's obviously the website, Twitter, all the usual stuff. Um, but more than anything else, uh, I hope we as a community uh, receive this initiative in the spirit in which it's intended as a genuinely uh, open and constructive invitation to try and build on what we've achieved so far 
uh, and do so much more uh, in future. Thank you. Slightly ahead of schedule, surprise. Um, I think we could probably take a couple of questions, but I'm going to ask uh, Anne Marie if you'll get ready and uh, our next panel to get ready. Just a second. Okay. Um, so, if you wouldn't mind, so we can start practicing protocol, if you could get up and walk up to the mic at the front. There's a mic here to my right and right to left. And if you're having problems accessing, just put up your hand and we'll get a roving mic to you. Thank you. Hi, Katrina. Can you yes, please introduce yourself. No, um, mic is on. Yeah. yeah. Okay, Katrina okay. McCallum, uh, Director of Open Science at Hindawi. I think it's absolutely implicit. I, I think it's this fantastic. Uh, in what you're doing, but where does the specific discipline of scholarly communication fit in to this, um, and, and will you make it explicit? Do you want to address that, Daniel, or James, go ahead. Well, mm -hmm. yes, I mean, it, it is absolutely intended to be part of the mix. Um, from the Sheffield side, Stephen Pinfield, who's here, uh, uh, one of my colleagues, uh, works very much on, on, on scholarly communication as, as a research topic and uh, uh, will certainly, I'm sure, uh, with others, be keen to in, you know, ensure uh, that those debates are in the mix. Um, I mean, it is a challenge, as you'll realise, <laughs> acknowledging the diversity and the history and the complexity of all of this stuff, and then trying to carve out from that a practical uh, work programme, initially for two years, that we can do with this large group of partners. So, uh, as I say, the intent, the spirit is there. The, 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 you know, at the same time, I think people will have to um, be patient uh, to some extent with our extent to to represent every single part of that uh, landscape uh, in everything we do from day one. But uh, you know that's the point really to build on what we've started and ensure that uh, uh, the full range of, of disciplines and perspectives uh, are there in the mix. Uh, but no, but it's a, it's a good point worth worth making. Thank you. I think I'd also say um, from our perspective. What we wanted to do with the Institute was really bring as many different capabilities together as possible. It wasn't just about the research on research community. It was about bringing an economic perspective, about bringing a social science perspective, a technologist's perspective, as we try to bring. So it is about this multifaceted approach to looking at the research, looking at the tools, looking at the data. And I think scholarly communications is at the centre of one of the things that, that uh, concerns us most. Um, as, as I tried to indicate in some of my slides. And so I, I do think scholarly communications is, is, uh, is certainly in the mix. And in fact, if you uh, look at the report that, that James is working on um, in collaboration with CWCS and ourselves on, on the landscape, scholarly communications definitely comes out of our, our data as, a, as an area that we're interested in. Questions. Um, can we get a roving mic to the back here? Just. Sorry, can you raise your hand? So. Hi. I just wanted to say can you that introduce this yourself, is. A, please. Oh, oh, sorry. Right. Put you on the okay, spot. Okay, Mer Merle Jacob, Professor in Research Policy, Lund University, and I'm also a member of the board of the Swedish Foundation for Humanities and Social Science Research. So I'm representing both communities here, the funding and the research community. Uh, this is a really great initiative, but I have a challenge question that I want to throw out to you. And that is that one of our biggest challenges in this field of research and research has always been to get funders and policymakers to stop thinking about research and talking about research and making policies for research as if it were a homogenous category or activity. What measures do you have at the Institute for changing that particular trend? Thank you for that. Um, I think that's a particularly important point. Um, Welcome very much is a global organization, and we absolutely be, believe very strongly in what you're saying. Context matters. And the research 
system, ecosystem as a whole, is a lot bigger than any one of us, both from a funder perspective, from a UK's perspective, et cetera. So this is why we worked really tirelessly to try to have conversations with funders around the world. It's not just about funders, but I think we do recognize that there are different complexities to where we are and what we're trying to achieve. And that hasn't been represented as well as, as we think could be in a lot of the, the research evidence that exists. So, so really bringing that conversation and, and really shining a light to the fact that we need to be talking to each other. I think that's first and foremost. I think the second is also recognizing that we need to be thinking about this in a systems way. And I think that speaks to in a way what you're saying, so that it's not just funders and decision makers, uh, policy makers, but we are bringing many more um, actors, if you will, participants, contributors to that, that participate in the research ecosystem. And I think that's hugely important. A lot of what, where we think there's huge transformative potential is to be looking at this with a systems view. Um, and, and it's not to say that that's not already happening in, in different contexts, but I think again, you know, a, a, an intentional effort to do so with the notion that we want to translate research into real benefits, into real changes in policies and practice at the outset and being clear about that, how important that is that we bring that into the research prioritization, into the research design and the research conduct. So I, we accept your challenge. Thank you very much for that. We hoped uh, that the next two years, which is why it's a pilot, we're going to have to think hard about you know, what, what needs to happen that's different than what's happening now. And again, as, as James has invited, we absolutely welcome any ideas or suggestions about how we can do that. In the interest of time, I'm going to move us on. Um, we're all available during the breaks, um, so please do come chat to us. But thank you very much for your attention, and I'm gonna hand over to the chair. Thank you.